hey, you, this next 30 seconds is very important. I have to convince you to stick around and watch this. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to open my bulbous Rolodex, and, and I'm going to call the Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year leader, Seth Fighter. And as if that wasn't enough, you better stick around because I got two great Canadian icons, both Corey and Chris Johnston from the Elite Series, and as if you weren't totally sold from the Trailer Park Boys Bubbles. <laughs> Freaking red panty night at my house. I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Just What You Needed, another fishing podcast. The world has been starved for f- people making Zoom conversations with pro anglers, and that's why I'm excited that you've tuned into ours. My name's Dave Mercer. And, and this is Mercer, so really ours is mine, and what's mine is yours, and we will build it all together. We are the world. We are the children. And if you haven't already caught on, this isn't a one-way street, friends. I mean, this is a relationship. I told you we'd build this together, and, and, and damn it, relationships require investing, and I have invested in us. That's right. You probably hear it. A much more silky smooth sound audio investments this week, and you're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, don't get too excited. They'll only be here for part of the show. You'll see this fancy mic pop in and out due to the magic of the interweb. But uh, without further ado, you're welcome for that. And I would want to say, happy Cinco de Mayo. That's right. Uh, This are uh, yet another Cinco de Mayo. Well, not another. This would be a very first, you know, Cinco de Mayo special, but we have put together a very, very, very special Cinco de Mayo special. And uh, with that, uh, we brought in some very fitting guests, three uh, three Canadians and and another dude that lives in the, the one little part of America that actually is a little bit north of, of parts of Canada. So... You, Happy Cinco de Mayo. And what is more Cinco de Mayo than our very first guest? That's right. He uh, has mustachio. The mustachio, right? It's not. He's leading Bassmaster Angler of the Year from Newmarket, Minnesota. The amazing fighter man, Seth Fighter. Fighter, you're leading freaking Angler of the Year. Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so far. Be a lot cooler after the last tournament. <laughs> Why was Fork so forking good? It always is. I mean, Walter's got a hundred pounds there in November. Like <laughs> when every place down south sucks. Like it's just it's that slot limit. The fish are smart, but I mean you can't keep anything between sixteen and twenty four, so it's just full up three to eight pounders it's nuts it's nuts yeah remember yeah. that remember that time that uh remember that time that you caught two at once yeah that was cool yeah but oh, they weighed was... they weighed less together than most of lee Livesey's bass so what was it to be on the wa- you know to be watching it like i was is one thing but to be on the water during it, what what goes through your mind when you come in and you hear what he has Oh, it was pretty cool. I mean, I never had a shot the last day, so I, I'd have I'd, I'd have felt probably pretty bad if I was Patrick Walters, though. I figured like whoever went out and caught a big bag the last day was going to win. He went out and caught thirty five pounds, and no doubt in my mind, if I did that, I would <laughs> think I was going to win. And then someone brings in forty two, and it's just like, huh? Yes, not. Yeah, he got two century belts and within six events, and did, waited over thirty on the final day, and still didn't win. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of big finishes, you got two top sixes in a row, two totally freaking different fisheries. Do you care? Do, like, do you really care if it's a if it's a big fish fishery like Fork or if it's a stingy Sabine River like 
or is the, are they just dollar signs? Uh, no, I, I mean, I'd rather go fishing on Lake Fork, but I think it's easier to win like a Sabine event than a Lake Fork event just because like Lake Fork, like you got to smash them, smash them like four days in a row. And Sabine, you could catch like 17 pounds one day and win, you know. But isn't that still smashing them? I mean, you're it, it, yeah, it is. But the, your other three days are going to average between eight and ten pounds, and you kind of just ride out one big day and win the event. Where Lake Fork, it's like you pretty much got to catch them big every single day. Some anglers said that Fork was tougher than it looked. Like, what? What is that? Is that true? Absolutely. I mean, you see the weights on paper, everything. Oh, everybody. How many bags over 20 pounds the first day? But you got to realize a lot of those guys might only cut five to eight bass all day long. You know, it's just the average size is so good that, you know, if you catch, I don't think you can catch 10 bass on that lake and not have 20 pounds. You know what I mean? Just because yeah. the average size is so good. Like I, I guarantee there's somebody that weighed over 20 and literally caught five bass. Talk to me about Gussie. I'll see the great Canadian snow leopard. Yeah. He's awesome. One of my favorite human beings on planet earth. Why? Uh, he's just the nicest guy I've ever met. Like he really is like too nice. Sometimes like I yell at him for being too nice. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was like, honestly my concern when he came to the elites. I'm like, ah, he might get walked cause he's so nice. Yeah. Like sometimes he'll chirp me and I'll chirp him back and then I'll be like, oh, sorry. Like, no, I just want it. Like, let's just keep talking shit to each other. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you call you? What you did at, everybody talks about what he did in Knoxville, but what you did in Knoxville was amazing to me. You called that from the night before the tournament. You said, Gussie's going to win. How did you call it? Uh, well, I, I mean, I practiced too, and mine sucked. I was catching, you know, two or three small, large mouth keepers a day. And um, I knew if someone could figure out the smallies, they would win. And after talking to him the last day of practice, he had them pretty dialed. And if you can catch a limit of those 18 plus inch smallies there, you're going to win, no doubt. But you were ridiculously confident. Like, like, I mean, Zona told me when you told him, you were like, Gus is going to win this tournament. Like, I, I believe we moved to camera on Seth Fighter's word. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, like I, I practice too. And like you go down the bank all day and you catch two, three, four, you know, 14, 15 inch large mouse. Then he goes out and practice and he's like, yeah, I caught two fours and a couple threes in like an hour. I'm like, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. What uh, talk to me about Matt Robertson? You, they, uh, uh, I mean, outside of both having similar hairstyle tips, you are very different individuals. Oh yeah, yeah. Trailer Park Matt, he's a full redneck. He teaches me a lot of cool stuff. Well, stuff such... that somebody needs to know, but like, yeah. Oh, so secret stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't say secret. More like semi-useless information that might help you at one moment in your life, but probably not. <laughs> um, speaking of things that could help you at a moment in your life, one of the topics we came up with last week that a lot of people seem to respond to is betting, betting on bass fishing. It, you know, you see things like a fan duel, you know, even Fox, Fox bets. I mean, a yeah. perfect time. It, do you think we'll ever see a day that there will be betting in bass fishing and if there is, is that something that you could get into? Uh, I'd like to see it. I'd probably stay out of it just because I'm playing and I don't want to go all Pete Rose on them. But uh, <laughs> I think drawing the betting lines for fishing would be almost impossible. There'd be a lot of money to be made there for but, sure. Just because it's not like two teams going head to head and you know every player and, you know, like most sports they're played on, you know, there's a lot less variables in them than fishing. Yeah. I think drawing the betting lines would be almost impossible for fishing tournaments, but I'd like to see it. Uh, but I'm talking about not even just uh, betting on anglers, but betting on like, will somebody catch two at a time on camera? You know what I mean? Will, oh, yeah. will, how many fives will we see in that? Like fork, it would have been the perfect one for how many 20 
bags, how many 30 yeah. bags, you know, cause that, yeah. y- you know, what's going to happen. It's just, it's almost like the coin flip, like a prop bet. Yeah. No, I'd like to see it. All right. All right. Well, that sounds good. What's all that crap behind you? Uh, you did stuff. that, didn't you? Did you do the decorating in there? Yeah. This is my little area. But you actually took the time and placed everything. Yeah, yeah. I got ducks hanging from the ceiling. I don't know if you can see them. Wow, and, that's incredible. Uh, got uh, Brian Brasher blew up a uh, Fast Times cover for me, so I put that up there. And then he's incredibly uh, cheap, so that's amazing. I'm sure Bass paid for it, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> all good. Thanks, Brian. Uh, yeah, then, Great, dude. I don't know. I got some duck mounts and uh, a couple of bass. My dad netted. His tournament party fished in a club tournament, and uh, it's funny. Uh, his tournament partner caught both the fish, and then on the plaque he put netted by Pete Fighter. And then <laughs> you know this was like back in the '80s, so he was get getting rid of it. And, uh, I kept it, so it's pretty funny. It's pretty awesome. I could just never see you setting all that stuff up. I just never see. You I like- did, yeah. No, I did. I hung all these ducks from the ceiling. Yeah. Wow. Side of the fighter that we don't. It's my little see. four by four cube that my wife doesn't touch. Well, what goes on in there that she wants to stay away from? Uh, just this, just zooms. This is all I do here, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the basement. <laughs> what about an Odney fans channel? You ever see that happening in your future? I mean, you really have done things in this sport that, I mean, you, I bet you never imagined there'd be a drink named the llama, or that no, there'd be a llama. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely didn't imagine either of that. But I feel like the only way you get paid on OnlyFans is by uh, getting naked, and I don't think anybody wants to see that. Well, I mean, I don't know. We'll put it out in the comments. But Fighter, I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you go. I mean, uh, okay. But, but before you, before you go, remember that time you caught two bass at once on Fork? Yeah, that was awesome. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great interview. Really? That's what I thought. Do, 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 do you have any tips for me to do but do this better? I think it was pretty good. Probably my fault. That sucks. So maybe you need better guests. I, I think you're a very good guest. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm a very bad interviewer. I don't know. No, I think you did it good. Did I? Yeah. How'd the Vikings do in the draft last night? Did you watch? Uh, I didn't, but I saw they took a, a tackle. So, I mean, we need help on the O line. So, um, yeah. Definitely a good draft pick. I hate when they draft like wide receivers and running backs right away. We definitely still need a quarterback, so it's all for nothing until we get one of those. But at least they're not like drafting wide receivers and running backs with the first pick anymore because they're pretty much dime a dozen. What do you think about the about the Bears' new quarterback? I, I like that it gives them hope. <laughs> like the, all the fans are really jacked up right now, but most. Co- Good college quarterbacks don't really end up ever being anything. They're like the hardest thing in the world to pick. I mean, if you look at the guys like yeah. that are running the league right now, like Rodgers and uh, Brady, like they were nothing. And they weren't number one picks, you know what I mean? If you yeah. look at the last like 10 number one picks, it's like Johnny Manziel, you know what I mean? He's like <laughs> playing like arena football right now. Like it's just it, – it, it just the good quarterbacks in college just never seem to – translate into the pros so it, it's really hard to pick a good one but we definitely need one is there a johnny manzella in in tournament fishing you think like who could be johnny manzell oh man like what about jacob fouts the paper boy i mean i called him the paper boy because it looks so so i could see him getting grizzled and really just yeah he's killing it in the open he really he's is fishing too. with us next year so i don't know if i want to i don't know who good johnny manzell was <laughs> Yeah, hard to say. Hey, fighter. Yeah. Go hang some more ducks. I will. I got to wait till fall to kill some and then get them stuffed and we'll do something big. Can you kill anything now? I just shot a turkey yesterday. What? Yeah, it's in the crock pot right now. Come on now. That would have made this a freaking good interview. We should have started with stuff like this. Outdoors people love when stuff gets shot. Yeah, I had three days to shoot a turkey and got it done, so it was pretty cool. All right. All right. Talk to you later, fighter. All right. See you, bud. See you, buddy. Bye. The always awesome but awkward, often awkward Seth Fighter. I mean, uh, I love that dude. 
The coolest thing about him is he's just real. He's a real person and to see his work ethic and see everything he's done pay off, it's amazing. I mean, the amount of fans that he has is, is staggering. Um, so thanks, Seth, for doing that, and, and good luck the rest of the season. We'll be checking back in with him. But how do you follow up Seth's fighter? I mean, from our Angler of the Year leader to, to two drones, droids, whatever you want to call them, these two were, I mean, there's good, hardworking people on the Elite Series. Then there's just people like this that are just soul-crushing drones put on Earth to take titles from hardworking people. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> that was very unprofessional. But they are at times as well. Let's bring out... We're not really bringing them out. We're just... Let's bring in... Corey and Chris Johnston. Chris and Corey Johnston, thank you for joining us. And uh, you guys are moments away from leaving, correct? Yes, Dave. We're just waiting on you, Dave. <laughs> I'm your delay. Yeah. We got a we got a 12 hour drive ahead of us here, so we're gonna get on the road as soon as we're done. Chris is gonna drive, and I'm gonna sleep the whole way. It's typical. So, so you guys are taking one rig down. You left another rig down there. Is that how it works? Rig left a truck, took one truck, one boat back, and uh, yeah, we're uh, we we're only roll. we only got to come home for four or five days yeah. so it just made the driving a lot quicker we kind of drove through the night to get home and now we'll we'll split the drive going back and it makes it a little easier we left a boat in nashville ah not bad not bad all right well i'm going to jump right into it and rather than me asking the question i'm bringing some technology in here guys this uh -huh. and we're gonna we're gonna see if this works it might not work but this is our mutual friend mark zona and what he had to say on our podcast just a few weeks ago this is not working at all. Hold on. My technology's weak. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Let me get it started. Turn her up, Dave. Corey tells me all the time how much better he is at bass fishing than Chris Johnson. Johnson, and I'm like, bro, the numbers don't lie. No, you're not. You have to. <laughs> it's hard to hear, but all I got was the Corey. Okay, the okay well, 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 we'll start again. You gotta, you gotta hear the whole thing because it's it's a roller coaster of emotions here. You know, Corey tells me all the time how much better he is at bass fishing than Chris Johnston. Johnston, and I'm like, bro, the numbers don't lie. No, you're not. <laughs> um, but, but but I will tell you something. Watching him, watching him on the water, uh, and I went to like you know I, I came to the St. Lawrence River tournament, and I wanted to watch him smallmouth. I, look, it's obvious he's great at, at largemouth fishing. Whenever we're on grass lakes tends to do very well lakes yeah. like you know surround your house um i think what gosh it's hard for me to say and i feel bad this and gussie and chris i think when it's all said and done Corey's gonna hold more trophy Ooh. <laughs> it was like an emotional roller coaster he was my me and your best friends <laughs> at least put him straight for a minute <laughs> What, what 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 do you have to say to that? I mean, that is the perpetual question: which brother is better? And and everybody's scared to ask it, so I'm going to ask it straight up: which one of you is better? I think uh, Zona nailed it. The stats don't lie. We can look at <laughs> previous history: who's got more trophies, money earnings. We can look at all that <laughs> and look at uh, what that says. Corey, why is Chris better? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. He might, he might have more money earnings. But, and trophies. Uh, and trophies. But uh, he's, he's lost for words, and that doesn't happen very often. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, my, I, I deal with these things with actions, Dave, so I might just fight him. He's going to get angry. Like, I might get angry and just fight him. Okay. I'm not that good of a talker. I'm more actions. Okay, calm down, calm down. Okay, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of actions, there's more accomplishments than just – Elite Series trophies. Who had the greatest hockey fight? Well, Chris has only ever been in one, so. And I won, and I retired from that, and I uh, scored goals. One and done. And how many, if he had won, how many did you have, Corey? And quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what? I'll be honest with you. I never won every one, but I showed up. <laughs> well, but I did have a lot of them. Why Corey, did, 
Corey got the water for the boys on the bench. So um, you Canadians know this kind of water boy fourth line. I'm just getting we, lit up here. <laughs> it's only been four we, minutes and I've just been getting lit up. We go do work on the ice and uh, score some goals and when we're tired. I'm a multitasker. A bit. <laughs> multitasker. More of like a Wendell Clark. Do it all. You, you could excite the crowd with both your fists and, and the puck. Oh, score goals. Yeah, clutch goals too. We call him the Muffin Man. Yeah. The, the what? The, the Muffin Man. Why the muffin man? Puck so much harder than him. I don't even know what he's talking about. Because <laughs> it's okay. Let me horrible. tell you this. He won't. He will not deny this. I have way better hands than he does. Tell him. He has better hands until he gets close to the net. Oh, here we go. He takes a shot and he shoots a muffin on the goalie, and it's embarrassing. You just put your head down. Unbelievable. But again, Dave will look at stats for hockey and uh, who played more, who went further. All-time penalty minute record holder, though, Dave. That counts for something. <laughs> That's definitely a record I'd be proud of. Yeah, I yeah. do I do remember watching him play junior C when I was younger. And a goalie's coming out for the puck, and Corey's racing to the puck, and true. the goalie's coming out to the blue line. And I thought, oh, this is terrible. Corey can't get the puck. Goalie's quicker. So he tucks up into a ball and just <laughs> hammer him. hammered the goalie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you hit the goalie. Oh, Why yeah. wouldn't you? Smoked him. But that well, I I mean, doesn't surprise all, me. Anymore. It's all up top, Dave. I mean – it happens so fast because I'm such a fast skater, Everyone right? Could like, see that the, he was not going to get to the puck. I was so. not getting to the puck, so I'm like, "What would Corey do in this situation?" Well, he would hit the goalie. Yeah, <laughs> so I did. And there's probably yeah, a fight was, after started that. Started a brawl. Not a big deal. It's another day in the old uh, Lakefield <laughs> Chiefs dressing room. My dad just hung his head, just shook his head. Yeah, but I get it from Lynn, so he can't be too ashamed. Lakefield Chiefs is that the team you played for? Yeah. yeah. Did you play the Port Perry Mojacks ever? We, oh, yeah. They were scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That says a lot about your career. It really does. Let's, let's leave you guys, and let me ask you about a guy that, that everybody knows you room with. Talk to me about Seth Fighter. I mean, everybody sees the mustache. Everybody sees the long hair. Everybody hears the llama and all the – but who is Seth Fighter, really? He is uh, – he's very quiet. He's uh, – He's somewhat intelligent. Um, <laughs> He's very intelligent when it comes to fishing and hunting. I'll give him that. He is. Um, You'll never see his legs. You'll never see his legs because they're awkwardly weird. Okay, so he always wears pants. He always wears pants. He's never shorts. Pants. What's or, wrong with his legs? Oh, oh, oh there's pictures, Dave. <laughs> there's pictures. It's ugly. It's ugly. He has to wear leg braces, and he's a little embarrassed about it. Yeah. So he doesn't like you out in public without uh, pants on. That's true. He must have ugly toes because I've never seen him in sandals either. You're right. He's always, his, his lower half is always covered. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's he's like 100 degrees out, and he's got his stupid rubber boot shoes on. And uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't like the sun. He drinks uh, children's Pedialyte when it's hot out. So he's, a, he's an interesting cat. Yeah. He's a good fisherman. That's for sure. He, yeah. smokes, he smokes darts like a champion. I'll give him that. <laughs> He, I mean, you might have the record for fights, but he definitely has the dart record. Without well, a doubt. Him and Thrift him would and be Thrift, in a battle. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You've competed against both. Who do you think would, what, is the greatest smoker between the two? Oh, I, I, I've heard Thrift sucks one back within like 20 seconds when he gets yeah, cut away know. from camera. Like It's yeah. pretty impressive. I haven't seen Fighter do it uh, off camera. Like I'm going to give it to Thrift, but I mean – Fighter is a – if it's not tied, he's a close second. Fighter's young, right? He's got time. I mean, he's got good, lung, good lungs right now. <laughs> <laughs> One of the topics we got talked about this week is betting on bass fishing. You, you see all the sports books in the U.S., you know, whether it be Fox Bet, whether it be FanDuel, DraftKings, something like that, apps where you could bet. And maybe it's not specifically on what angler will win, but it'd be things like at Lake Fork you could have bet – how many five pounders or how many bags over 20, how many bags over 30. Is that something you could ever see happening in our sport? Well, hundred percent. I just had a buddy come over to my house yesterday. He does fantasy fishing. And uh, he's like, how has someone not done online gambling? He bets on everything. He's like, I'd love to bet on fishing. And he's like, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of Americans that would bet on it. And uh, I'm shocked. No one has come yeah. up with a, with an app for it yet. It will happen one of these days. Dave's working on it. That's why he's asking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah, guys. You know me and technology. Yeah. yeah. 
just yeah, a moment. No, I, I, <laughs> very yeah, technical. I 100% agree. Like all of our buddies are are all over the fantasy fishing, and I mean they to, make side bets with each to other. To be honest, they do the fantasy fishing, and they've all put in 40 bucks for the year, and they bet on uh, who's gonna who's gonna win the fantasy fishing. So it does happen. Someone's just gotta create the platform. One of our buddies, I think, is like 50th in the world right now in it. So that's that's pretty good. A masturbator? Yeah. <laughs> Come Old on. Jeff Sloot. Sloot. Your yeah. old employee. Yeah. I, I knew he would make it in this industry. <laughs> I, 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 from the first day I met him. <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, you, talk to me about. I mean, wait, well, I guess we better talk about this season and what's ahead. What What do you? Well, I mean, it's you're at. Both having decent seasons. I mean, you're not freaking Seth Fire right now, but I mean, yeah. uh, talk to me about this year. Yeah, it's been. I mean, it's been a good year for both of us. I had one one slip up and finished like 70th or something like that. But um, you know, for both of us, it's been a it's been a really good year, pretty consistent. Steady. I had a, a 50th place. Uh, it was the first time I never caught a bass all day three, and that one hurt. <laughs> like, yeah, that was a long, sucks. miserable day, but. Uh, to be honest, there's two tournaments coming up in Alabama, Neely Henry and Gunnersville. If uh, either one of us can get through that and be in contention for that angle of the year, if Seth or Patrick slip up, it'd be pretty cool to have a chance going up north. Yeah. We know those two bodies of water pretty well. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're looking for two top tens for both of us when we get up to Thousand Islands and Champlain. And I mean, if we can get lucky and get a couple top tens or one top 10 and a top 20 in these next two and um, you know, either put some one pressure of us, on old set. Yeah, put a little nice. pressure on them. What, what people, everybody talks about you guys working together, but how do you work together? Because when I look at your finishes, I mean, sometimes I think you're working together and sometimes I think it's totally opposite. Is it the same every event or is it situational? Well, we give, to give you an example on fork, we knew we were fed bed fishing and he'll go through a pocket and be like, I found 15 in here. Don't go in here. I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> like, you just you just took out one of the best pockets. I can't go in. <laughs> Should have went there first. So he's like, there's no point in going through there and catching the same betters as me and but fighting the, over But it. the problem was, like, there were so many fish and there was more moving up. You could just literally go in that pocket, go down the bank, and there'd be all new fish in, in two days from now. So, But for, for that tournament, for example, working together, like, we didn't share any spots or fish the same area. We just said, we're both doing the same thing. Let's not compete against each other and fish different sections. So that's, that's, we didn't see there. each other the whole tournament, but we did the exact same thing on different parts of the lake. So, yeah. And then like, if we're fishing, whatever, Neely Henry, um, he'll fish one section. I'll do another one and we'll just kind of communicate. Hey, I'm, I'm getting some bites on a, on a top water, try it over there and stuff like that. It's just breaking down the lake quicker. And a lot of anglers do it, believe it or not. Like, um, Seth probably, he talked to Matt Robertson a little bit just to kind of bounce ideas off each other, not necessarily the spots. And a lot of people that room together do it. And we just are lucky that you can trust each other 100% that I'm not sending them on a wild goose chase. Corey, can you really trust each other 100%? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the beauty part of, of <laughs> what we do. I mean, we've done it our whole lives. So uh, the other good thing about it is if he goes through an area – and says, there's no fish there. There's no fish there. You know, I, I don't have to worry about having to go through and, you know, well, maybe there was some fish on this point. Or maybe, maybe I lied about it and there was a winning spot in there. Yeah. And I told him not to go in. That's there, when he would get happens. a beating. That would get, he would get a beating for that. Is there ever beatings? Uh, not very often. There was one last year and I won that one too. And there's, there's video proof of it, Dave, if you uh, look hard enough. What? Come on! I need to get my hands on this. We can't, yeah. talk, we can't talk about this one online. <laughs> He's a little no. embarrassed. He was eating grass. People like to hear stories of beatings. I mean, the the, the Caleb Summerall Lee Livesey fight we talked about a few weeks ago that was very popular with our viewers. It, yeah. Will you open up to me? Yeah, I mean, Chris took advantage of me when I was at a weak moment and stuffed my head in the grass. There's freshly cut excuse. grass, mind he, you. He freshly tried, cut. He tried to kick me. And it went all downhill yeah, from there. Like karate, you know, <laughs> roundhouse kick. Are you trained? Oh, he thinks he is in his mind. So <laughs> trained. <laughs> it's all about how much whiskey you have. That's where your training goes up and up and up, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I will try search out the video and, and see you if could, I can. You could probably get it off Livesey. 
He was oh. there to the witness. Livesey sends me the best video. So yeah, he's 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 talk, talk to me about him and what he did last week. Number one, I mean, not only is he one of the coolest dudes on earth, really, but I mean, what he did yeah, last oh, week. He's a dick. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's not a nice guy. What? He never gave us any winning spots on Fork for one. Okay. Didn't call how, many, us one. how many did you give him on St. Lawrence? Mm, one really one good, good one. one. And his buddy went top 10 to off. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But uh, no, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a great dude. And to see him do that on his home pond, I know he's done it fun fishing, like 30, 40 pounds. And to see him do that on the final day was pretty cool to watch. Like he a- deserved it. And uh, that was pretty incredible. I wish he had to caught a 10 pounder and beat the record though, to be honest. Yeah. Was and there a little part of you that watched it and was like, man, that's oh, what I was supposed to have. Like I was supposed to win in front of my home. Like if the borders were open, in I mean, town, it would have been yeah. embarrassed what happened with Lee Living, like crowd wise and yeah. local support wise. Does that bother you at all? Or does that just drive you to, or is that Corey's solace that man, when I win, there'll be allowed to be people. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for, Dave. <laughs> yeah. He's waiting for the borders to open. It'll be three years. <laughs> 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 no, it's it was pretty cool. Like having that crowd when I finished second on the St. Lawrence was pretty incredible. I couldn't imagine what it'd be like when I won. But uh, one of these days, it'll happen. The board will be open. We'll we'll show uh, show live and see what a real crowd looks like and some fans. Wow, trash but, talking. No, but it it was cool to see. Like I was, uh, I I would love to win that one, but uh, obviously I didn't have a chance to see him do it in that fashion. Pretty cool. Corey, you ever want to just? Stab him with a fork? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Who, me or Livesey? Oh. Both. Both of them. It don't matter. <laughs> Who Knife. would you stab first? Oh, uh, ooh, that's a good question. I think you want to stab Livesey to slow him down. He's a big dude. Yeah, but, oh, here's a good one for you. Speaking of Livesey being a big dude. So we're at the Bass meeting uh-huh. in December. Birmingham. Oh, a couple oh. years ago. And we all sitting at the bar. The girls were there had a few drinks and someone said, I think Lee could beat you in a wrestling match. And I said, there is no chance that Lee can beat me in a wrestling match. And I said, I'll do one better. I will bet you that Lee couldn't beat Chris in a wrestling match. <laughs> How do I get, I, I see what you did there. I was I minding my own business. So having a anyway, beer and I got dragged into this and Corey so knows you, I could beat him. So a few bills, so a few bills got thrown out. We go into this room and there's tables, chairs. We clean oh, everything up. Bills, wait, wait. How much money are we talking about? Well, not, not, a, lot. not a lot, but I mean, there was some 20s. To keep, keep it on. Honest. Honest. Right. So um, keep it on us. So we, you know, cleaned all the chairs out. <laughs> and, uh, Chris and Lee get out of And Chris beat them like a redheaded stepchild. It was the problem was he's too big. So once he got him down, <laughs> I can't do anything with him. <laughs> he's just too big. So we, but, it's like. Like wrestling Brock Lesnar. You can do yeah. much down there. Yeah. So it, uh, I don't know how I got dragged into that. It was mine and my own business. It seems to be your whole life, really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he strung you into a lot of deep, dark yeah. holes. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's so innocent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he plays that He plays that role really well, doesn't very he? Well. I may have well, started dude. a few things in hockey, but very well. there was guys in the team that would finish it for me. And it wasn't Corey, just so you know. <laughs> How about the time we walk into the bar and Chris start the fight? There's oh. four people in the bar. Poor Tim Brandt walks in with us. <laughs> Don't bring Tim in. Ex NHLer. No business in North Carolina. <laughs> four pe- How do you start a fight in a bar with four people? I mean, no, can't. No, no, I don't think we'll bring that story up on this one. That might be uh, dinner talk next week. Okay. I look forward to it. Okay. I have no way to end this, but how we're going to end this is with a battle. Both of you, paper, rock, scissors, best out of three. The rules are one, two, three. And on the third one, you shoot. Can you do that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Let's go, boys. Are you counting down or no? Me. I mean, you guys can do it together. I'll just lay out. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. God. Just like fishing, Dave. Well, I mean, this like the stats don't lie. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> wow. We'll see on Neely Henry. I want to thank the first Canadian to ever win an elite and the only Canadian not to win an elite. <laughs>
<laughs> that was good. All right. Is that what you're going to say now? He, he deserves go that. Through the, on the boat line? No. I, he's the, only the only Canadian to not win. <laughs> there we Dude, go. True story. True story. I did tell everyone that that's 100% how I was going to introduce you after, after Gussie won, right? Yeah. And – I swear to you, you think I have no heart, but I swear to you, like, I'm all set to do it. And there's people listening. Like, <laughs> there's anglers waiting for it. Uh, I just was like. Buddy, I would have laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Four-time Canadian. I know you would have laughed, but I was, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling evil at the time, I guess. Yeah, well, we'll save it for the classic. Exactly. All right. I'm not scared. <laughs> Safe travels, boys. All right, buddy. buddy. We'll see you. Too great. Canadian icons right there. And let's be honest, I don't care who you are, what country you're from, who doesn't love a great brother scrap? I mean, watching two brothers, two flesh and blood, two people of the same loins beat the crap out of each other never gets old. I don't care where you're from or what you're into. And hey, if you see that truck traveling down to Alabama, there's a good chance at any moment they could pull over because I, th- I think they left uh, a little keyed up. But uh, Corey and Chris, thank you for doing this. We'll, we'll be checking in with them all season long. But the problem is when you have two great Canadian icons like that, how do you back that up? I mean, this is a special, special, Cinco de Mayo special to be exact. So how do we back that up? Well, before I start talking about how we're going to back it up, I, this is the point of the show where I have to warn you, if you're easily offended or offended by very offensive things, you may want to turn this off because you're going to get offended. Let, let's be honest. I mean, if you have not heard of the Trailer Park Boys to this point in your life, this is going to offend you. I mean, if you haven't found out about them now, that they're going to offend you most likely. So, Turn this off. Now, for those of you that stuck around, and, and if before you turned off real quick, hey, give us a like and comment and all that stuff. Um, but also, remember, we gave you three great pros. We'll be back next week. But for those of you that stuck around, I mean, without further ado, let's bring out a great Canadian icon. I mean, we may talk fishing. We may talk. Who knows what we're going to talk about. But when you... Get an opportunity to suck off a teat like the Trailer Park Boys teat. You suckle up and you 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 you, you get some of that bubbles drip. Damn it! And that's exactly what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, because we have the Grand Pooba of the Trailer Parks. I mean, he is the true rightful leader of the Trailer Parks all the way. I mean, a, a, a gift a song maybe is fitting. Did you ever know that you're my hero? If I could fly higher than an eagle, bubbles is the wind beneath my wings. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from Sunny Vale Trailer Park, bubbles. All right, let's jump right into this. I said I would bring a great Canadian icon, and then many visions will pop through your head, but I think I have delivered the almighty bubbles. Thank you for being part of our shitty podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is fantastic. What are you doing? Right now? Well, I'm at Recky's, and Recky just went, him and Julian went to the liquor store, and they're going to get fined for covid because you're not supposed to be out and they needed liquor so they went to the liquor store anyway they don't listen to that stuff do they not very well you, congratulations it's your anniversary right with 20 years yes 20th anniversary so how what have you guys been doing to celebrate well i mean nothing's really changed those guys smoked dope and drink liquor every day so they just basically increase the the amount you know to celebrate but it was already too much you know now they're drinking more and doing more so that's all we do to celebrate just up the intake up the intake. how do you stay so le- how do you stay grounded well i mean i you know i don't i don't partake in the in the dope the way those guys do i mean i'll have a snap of liquor don't get me wrong i like a nice sassy liquor but 
I mean, I don't get on the dope the way those guys do. Recky, Recky smokes, chain smokes, sex paper joints all day. <laughs> do, That's do. too much. All right, it's over the top. It's over the top. Now, this is a fishing podcast. Do you, do you fish at all? I do fish. I mean, I'm always hauling shopping carts out of the ponds and out of the lakes and things, right? That's what I do for a living. So I'll bring the rod, you know. I'll do the carts first. I have a big contraption, a big claw. I throw it out and I drag the lake. So that's kind of like fishing. I fish for shopping carts. And then if I got time, I'll bring the rod and zang her out there, you know, do some there, fishing. There's three Canadians on the on the top pro level, on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I'm searching the country trying to find, do you think you could, is that something you'd aspire to or you're, you're locked down as, as the mayor of oh, Sunnyvale? I'm, I'm not too shabby. With a rod and reel, believe me, I can, you know, I can fish with the best of them. I mean, I could be in that tournament too, maybe. You, you never you know. Think, you think, what, what about the other boys? Any of them? No, the, any, any anglers? Randy's in? actually, Randy's quite good at fishing. You know, Ricky doesn't have the patience. He just gets too high. And, <laughs> and Julian, um, Julian, you know, he won't do it either because he's, he won't set his drink down and it's hard to cast, you know, do the, flip the baler over and stuff with one hand and he won't set his drink down. So fishing's not really for him. I could see that. I could see, <laughs> I could see that. What is swear net? Swear net is a, it's an online, like an all swearing network. And we know those fellas quite well. And they have our, they put our stuff on there, all of our shows and our series. So it's like an online, I believe we own part of it. I think Julian did a deal with them. So it's like an all, it's an online, all swearing network. All swearing all the time. Yes, sir. Every show that's on there has got some degree of swearing in it. That's the criteria. That's really how things are judged. It's, it's, well, I mean, it's going to be judged some way, right? Exactly. So I, am I any good at this? I'm, I, you do a lot of interviews and I, do, I don't, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm kind of nervous. Am I doing okay? Oh, I think you're doing fantastic. I do interview. I do this type of thing, interviewing people, and I sometimes, I used to get so nervous, I used to piss myself. Come on. Yeah, right during the interview. I mean, I would never let on, but several times I pissed myself. You're a professional. Well, I mean, back in the early days when I, you know, interviewing, you know, rock stars like Axl Rose and Sebastian Bach, I'd get talking to them and ask myself. <laughs> well, what outside of pissing yourself, what's the coolest thing that you've been able to do? I mean, you guys took this tiny little thing 20 years ago and turned it into a worldwide phenomena. You are mm -hmm. a Canadian icon. As a Canadian icon, tell me an experience that you, that you just had to pinch yourself. Oh, geez, there's been, there's been many of them. I mean, let me think what some of the big ones were. I mean, I got to fly a fighter jet. That was pretty awesome. Flew a, you know, a, an F-18 fighter jet a couple times. That was fantastic. I mean, I went on tour all over the world with Guns N' Roses and played, you know, 50 or 60 shows with Axl Rose. That was quite a thrill. Always a thrill, you know, flying around on his jet with him and playing rock shows. That's that type of thing. I mean, I got to play with Rush, and I got to play with, you know, Sebastian Bach, all kinds of people like that. So I'm those are all, you know, those types of things are pretty, you know, I still can't believe I did some of them. You know, went on the Jimmy Kimmel show, went to Jimmy Kimmel's house. That was pretty fun. Wow. Did, all who, that type of stuff. Who took care of the, who took care of the cats? Oh, I have a whole team of people I employ. A team? I got a little, there's a little, uh, little fella from Mexico. Holy fuck, he's great with kitties. <laughs> Just great with kitties. You are phenomenal. You are a Canadian icon. What is left to accomplish in your life? Oh, all kinds of things. All kinds of things. I'd like to get a, I live in a shed, but I'd like to get maybe a, a second level on my shed so that I could have the downstairs just for entertaining, you know, put my bedroom upstairs. That'd be pretty, pretty nifty. 
Price of lumber's dear now with COVID, though. I know, and the, there's no wiring. I was talking to my electrician. There's no wire left in the city. People are used up all the wire, so I don't think I'm going to be rewiring it anytime soon. Well, you know what? I, I, I want to thank you for taking this time because our horrible little podcast could never achieve this kind of greatness to have you. Did you realize that these few minutes are a highlight for this horrible podcast? Oh, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Can we go fishing sometime, Bubbles? Yes, I would love to go fishing sometime. All right. Get on the boat and, you know, get her going. What's your favorite lure? Oh, I'm, I'm sort of, I've got the same lures I've had since I was a little guy. Yeah. I mean, I like, you know, I like the classics. I like the Red Devil, you know. I've got, I've got you know, a lot of them are, you know, all rusty things now, but i got to get them shined up. Okay, we'll get them get shining because we're going fishing. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Bubbles. <laughs> Seth Fighter, the juggernaut that is the Johnston brothers, <laughs> and Bubbles from the freaking trailer park boys. I mean, who, who does that? Who Who does that? Like, comment, rate, subscribe. Mercer, out. It would be super cool if we had the technology to make it right there. We don't have that technology. I... I we got new mics tune in next week mercer every wednesday at 6 p.m all right i'll just stop it thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe because bob cobb of the bass masters told you to you hear